Hello, I'm Chris Busby. I'm just going to say a few words to you about the uh, mystery of the radioactive rain in Brazil. For some time now, actually quite a long time, um, Samuel da Dal Pizol, I hope I've pronounced that right, um, and now other people have been measuring high levels of gamma radiation in rain samples that have washed out um, in Brazil. And other people too have also um, been posting things on the internet uh, where they have measured high levels of gamma radiation dose rate in samples that have rained out on, on cars, especially after thunderstorms. Um, and this radiation I suggested they should look at over a period of time because it's quite mysterious. Very high dose rates, incidentally. I mean, Samuel has uh, measured 15, 16 microsieverts per hour in this rainwater. I mean, that's about 1,000 times background, maybe 2,000 times background, depending on where you are. So that's a significant radiological hazard, in my opinion. So the question is, where is it coming from? Of course, everybody's thinking Fukushima. But the most likely um, explanation, in my opinion, is radons. But the question is, how does it work? So what I asked Samuel to do, and some other people have done this too, is to take the sample, put it in a plastic bag, seal it, so that nothing can get out, and then measure it over a period of time. Anyway, they did this. Um, in fact, Samuel sent me a sample. Uh, uh, it was posted to, to my lab in Wales, and I looked at it, but there wasn't anything there that we could detect. So it's a short half-life um, material that we're we're, we're uh, concerned about. So anyway, I, I, I decided to have a look at it. I was thinking last night I'd better try and sort this out, because it seems quite interesting. Um, anyway, the decay of radon, which is RN222, uh, goes through a whole series of radon daughters till it ends up with lead um, 210, which has a half-life of about 22 years. Incidentally, lead 210 is quite a significant hazard, because it decays to polonium-210, which is an alpha emitter, and which was the stuff that killed Litvinenko, the spy, or the, well, whatever he was, anyway. So, um, so the, 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 the interesting thing is to figure out the half-lives. So radon-222, which is a gas, has a half-life of 3.8 days. Then you get polonium-210, 3.05 minutes, and then lead-214, 26 minutes, then bismuth-214. Lead-214 is a beta emitter. Bismuth-214... 19.9 .9 minutes, then that goes to polonium-214, 164 microseconds, and then that goes to lead-210, which has, as I said, a long half-life, or longish half-life, 22 years or so. Okay. So the, if you look at the gamma radiation from those, only, only radon-222 and bismuth-214 are appreciable gamma emitters. And if you weight the, the radiations from them, you find that bismuth-214 has about 50% more gamma radiation than radon-222. The ratio is 60 to 80. I know this because I, did, I, did, um, I do a lot of court cases um, involving exposure to radium and radon and so on. Okay. Well, anyway, the point is that if you look at the measurements that Samuel made... You get, uh, he starts off with about 16 microsieverts per hour, and then in about two and a half hours, it goes down to about one microsievert, well, 1.3 microsieverts per hour, but you can reckon that there's a bit of background to be subtracted from that. So that gives you approximately four half-lives. So you've got 16 to 8, then 8 to 4, and then 4 to 2, then 2 to 1. Very roughly four half-lives um, in two and a half hours, which is 150 minutes. So that gives you a, ha a mean half-life of about 30, of about 37, is that right? Worked it out. Mean half-life of 37 minutes, yeah, that's right, okay. So that's a bit long for bismuth 214, which is 19.9 .9 minutes, but it's approximately in the right area. So this is what I think is happening. I think what's happening is that the radon gas gets into the, into the water into the, it, 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 it comes out of the ground and then it dissolves in the rainwater because it's quite soluble in water, radon gas. And then it, it decays. It's decaying all the time when it decays to bismuth 214 as a gamma emitter because the other ones are quite short half-life. So you, you, you've got some build-up, in, in my opinion, in the water of the, of the lead 214 and the bismuth 214. 
Both of, them for, both of those substances form insoluble hydroxides in water. So it seems to me that what you're getting is a concentration of, um, of the solid material that is a decay product of the radon in the water. And then, of course, when it comes down, it will have an effective half-life equal to, to the half-life of the bismuth-214 and possibly, the, you know, including the lead-214 precursor, which is 26.8 minutes. But, of course, it's the bismuth-214 that you'll see. So I think what's happening is that is, is that's the explanation. So there we are. That's that's the, the, the mystery of the the mystery of the radioactive rain in Brazil solved, in my opinion. Of course, there may be another explanation, but anyway, I think that's the most likely one, because of course Brazil has quite a high um, concentration. It has a lot of places where there's a lot of radium, so it's going to be a lot of radon in Brazil. So. Is this a radiological hazard? Well, actually, yes, it is. It means that the, this rainwater is significantly radioactive, and if you were to drink it or be out in it, you would get quite an appreciable radiation dose. For as long as it was raining, you would be getting 15 microsieverts per hour. Well, well anyway, you know, uh, maybe not as much as that, but um, certainly uh, half of that, I would think. So that's a significant radiological hazard, isn't it? I wonder if anybody has um, has written anything about that. I mean, people go on and on about radon buildup in in rooms and so on as a, as a hazard, but this seems to me to be a significant hazard, and it probably causes uh, various immediate effects, probably diarrhoea, that kind of thing, you know, flu-like symptoms at the time of just or shortly after the rain falls. So anyway. Um, I'm glad to have, uh, have, have, have tried to resolve that problem and possibly resolved it, okay, so that people aren't worrying that they're being irradiated to death from Fukushima. But it does, think, uh, it does suggest that they should get out of the rain when it rains, doesn't it? Thank you for listening.